Hello and welcome to today's math lesson. So first of all guys, can we all turn to wave and say a big hello to our friends on camera. Hello. And we'll begin by doing our meditation sequence. So I will sit down, take two fingers, find our heart center, left hand on our laps and close our eyes. When you're ready, guys, you can open your eyes and come back to the room. And next, we'll do our stretch sequence. So let's stand up and push in our chairs. And we can begin by stretching up high to the sky. <laughs> Big stretch. And then let's go down low to touch our toes. up high one more time and this time can we go tippy toe high and while we're there let's have a wave side to side and then back down to touch our toes once more and then hands on hips let's have a wiggle side to side Stop, and another wiggle side to side. Stop, forwards, backwards, forwards, backwards, forwards, backwards, and stop. And now we'll go round and round, round and round, and stop. And then let's go back the other way, round and round the other way. Give our spines a nice stretch. Excellent, guys. And then shake it out. Arms and legs, we can shake out. And to finish, we'll do five claps. One, two, three, four, five. Excellent, guys. Have a seat. So in our previous math lessons, we've been looking at how we can calculate the time from the beginning or the start to the end or the finish. Now, can anybody remember the word we use? Duration of time. The time from the beginning or the start of something until the end when it finishes is known as duration. So let's write that word on the board again. Duration is D U R A T I O N. And we've been talking about duration of time. I M E. So all together, guys, duration of time. Which basically means from the start until the end. And in our previous lesson, we didn't look at the clock. What did we look at about duration of time in our previous lesson? When we want to know about days and dates, we don't look at the clock. What do we look at? Calendar. calendar. Yes, remember we looked at the calendar to find out about different days. 
and how long the duration is. For example, if I write a date of 3rd of June until what day in June? What shall we say? Give me a 14th. Okay. 14th of June. And what we'll do with this one, we'll do a fairly easy one because it's the same month, which means we don't have to worry about calculating how many days in June. We just need to count the days from the 3rd until the 14th of June. And remember, always make sure to count the day first too. So the third is one. Now let's see who can come forward and correctly demonstrate how many days the duration of this time period is. And today, Pak Bung will come and help me. But don't worry, Pak Bung, because we can do all together. But first of all, let's read our time period once more. Third of June until 14th of June. So all we need to do is count the days. And I think we might just about have enough fingers. So let's do it together, guys. Third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth. Okay, how many so far? Ten days, and we're up to the twelfth. So then we need 13th, 14th. So how many days in total? 12 days. So Pak Bung, you can write the answer here. 12 days. D, A, Y, S. So you see, we can say the duration of time from 3rd of June to 14th of June is 12 days. And that's how we work out the duration of time for a calendar period in the same month. Pak Bung, that was excellent. Big round of applause for Pak Bung, please, guys. Now, that was a fairly easy one to start because both of our days are in the same month. But it's not always that easy. Sometimes we have to go from a day in one month to a day in the next month. And that means calculating how many days in the particular month. Remember, some months have 30, some have 31. And February is a very tricky month because it has 28 days and then every four years gets an extra day. So let's do one more together. Okay, so this time, guys, you can tell me, what date shall we start with? What's our start date? 9th what month not 9th 9th of November okay so now let's go to a date in the next month and the next month after November December so what date in December are we going to go to 25, okay, 25th of December is a special day. What day is that? 25th of December? Christmas Day. The 25th December. D-E-C-E-M-B-E-R. Okay, so we're going from 9th of November, 25th, of December. So the first question we need to ask ourselves, how many days in November? 30 or 31? 30. 30 days in November. Okay, so let's make a note there of 30 because that will help us when we need to work out November. And let's see what student can come forward and demonstrate how to do this problem for us. And now Pat will come forward and help us but we'll all do it together. So we're looking at the duration of time from 9th of November to the 25th of December. So the first thing we need to do is how many days are we using in November from 9th to 30th? 
how many days? 22 days. Excellent, you see? Not 21, because we need to count the first day. So 9th to 30th of November is 22 days. So Pat, the first thing you can do is write 22 days for November. And then days is D, A, Y, S. Excellent. So we know the amount of days for November. Now, the amount of days for December. Now, the second month is easy because we always go from the first to the day that we're talking about. So the first to the 25th of December, how many days? From the first to the 25th is 25 days. So now Pat can write 25 days for December. Excellent, Pat. Well done. So we know we've got 22 days in November and 25 days in December. What do we need to do next? Add together. Exactly. So 22 plus 25. So Pat will show how we can do this calculation here. So first of all, 2 plus 5 equals 7. And then 2 plus 2 equals 4. Excellent, Pat. And Pat has correctly added together the two amounts of dates. So we can say 9th of November until 25th of December is 47 days. So you see how important it is to know how many days if you're going right to the end of the month. Pat, that was excellent. Big round of applause for Pat, please, guys. So that was a recap of the previous lesson, duration of time with the calendars and days. We're going to move on now to look at another thing that we use with time. And this is known as a schedule. Can we say that word, guys? Schedule. Does anybody know what a schedule is? A schedule is something you use every day. You use it here in school because another format for a schedule is timetable. And what we use in school is the timetable so we know our students have what lessons at what times. So what we're looking at today is how to use a timetable which will give us the times and the activities that are to be done in a certain sequence on a schedule. So what we've got now is a PowerPoint presentation for our students to observe, listen to, and also practice speaking about timetable schedules. So let's turn to look at the TV screen, please, guys. So let's take a look at our PowerPoint presentation, Schedule Timetables. And here in the picture, you can see an example of a timetable. You can see the big word timetable along the side. Now, what this is a timetable of is a music festival. All different bands will come and perform at different places at different times. But people want to know what bands they want to see and what time they will be playing. So you can see here on the left-hand side, is the times 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the 24-hour time and all the way through till 11 o'clock at night. And then here we have the different places where they will be playing. So for example, if you wanted to go and see Sigma, you would have to be at the main stage at seven o'clock and this is what we mean by timetable it tells us where we need to be if we want to do certain activities we use different types of timetable schedules every day yes 
For example, we use class timetables. You use every day, guys. You need to know where you need to be for what lesson at what time. And the way that you know is by looking at your class timetable every day. So you're already using one, and you probably didn't even know. And you can see this class timetable has all the days. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Now this isn't a school class timetable. This is for a gymnasium where people go to work out. So for example, if you wanted to do body pump, you would need to be at the gym at Monday, 12.30, because that's the time they do body pump. But if you wanted to do Muay Thai, Thai boxing, you can see on Sunday at 12 o'clock is the time for Muay Thai. So the people who want to do the different activities, they use the class timetable to find out when their class is and what time so that they can be there. But there's other time, types of timetables too. We use bus timetables. Yes, if we want to go on a trip to other places, sometimes we take a bus or a train. And we need to know what time the bus or the train will leave and what time it will arrive in the other place. And here's an example here. So we've got a timetable for Rayong, Chiang Mai, and then back to Rayong. So you can see the first bus in the morning, 5 a.m. It leaves Rayong at 5 a.m. Goes to Chiang Mai and arrives at 10 p.m. So if you want to get that bus, you need to know what time to be at the station. And that's why we use timetables. We use television timetables. Now, who likes watching television? Everybody. Who has a favorite TV show? Me. So what I want to know is what time my favorite TV show is on television. And that's why we use timetables. For example, who likes Tom and Jerry? Tom and Jerry is fun. So look at the television timetable. Tom and Jerry Tales. So if we want to watch Tom and Jerry, what time do we need to have the television on? 1.30 p.m. But later, if we want to watch Looney Tunes, we have to have the television on Saturday at 6 a.m. So you can see the different programs with the different times and the different days. And this is how we use a timetable. Therefore, we must learn to read schedules and timetables accurately. We need to know how to read them so that the information is correct. So we know what time to get the bus, what time we study English, and what time our favorite TV show starts. All timetable schedules must have two things. Now some have more, but every timetable must have at least two. The first one, time. Yes, all timetables need the time that the activity must be done. And the second thing, activity. The thing that we must do. So time and activity on every timetable. Now here we have a timetable, bus schedule, spring 2015. So you can see the different places that the bus will go at the different times. 
Depart main campus. Arrive George. Depart George. Arrive main campus. And you can see the trips all the way from 1 to 10 with the different times. So now let's practice reading this timetable. What time does trip three depart main campus? Okay, so the first thing to do is find trip three. And trip three is here. Now what time does trip three depart main campus? 10.25 a.m. So you see, if you need to get that bus, you need to be at main campus for 10.25. So well done, guys. See, you're reading a timetable. Trip three departs main campus at 10.25 a.m. Okay, next question. What time does trip six arrive at George? Okay, so now let's go down to trip six. Now we're not looking for depart main campus, it's arrive at George. So let's find arrive at George, go down to trip six, and what time can you see? Excellent. Well done. It arrives at George at 2.15 p.m. So we say trip six arrives at George at 2.15 p.m. What time does trip two arrive at main campus? Okay. So trip two is here. And then all the way at the end, we find arrive main campus. So what time can you see? Perfect. So now you see how to read the timetable. Trip two arrives at main campus at 9.50 a.m. And the last question, how many trips are there every day? How many trips can you see? 10. So you see, it's not just the information about times, it gives us other information too. By looking at trip and counting the number of trips in one day, we know how many there are. There are 10 trips every day. And that's how we read a schedule with a timetable. Any questions, guys? That was great. Well done. <laughs> Welcome back to class. We hope your students enjoyed the PowerPoint presentation so that they can begin to learn and understand about schedules with timetables and how it's very important to note the time and the activity. Because if we want to do something, we want to know what time it starts. And that is the function and the reason for the timetable. And coming up, we've got a board activity to do our school timetable for today. But first of all, guys, it's time for our stretch sequence. So let's stand up and push in our chairs. And we'll begin by doing some rotations. Left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. Right, excellent guys. Now we'll do some stretches. Let's do five to our right. One, two, three, four, five. Excellent, and now we'll do five stretches to our left. One, two, three, Four, five. Brilliant, guys. And let's have a shake. Arms are like shaking again. And then we can take our right hand and find our left foot. And then 
we'll take our left hand, find our right foot. Right hand, left foot. Left hand, right foot. Right hand, left foot. And left hand, right foot. Excellent. And to finish, we will do five slow jumps. One, two, three, four, five. Excellent, guys. Have a seat. So what we're going to do now is a board activity for our students to tell me about their school timetable today. So we're going to do an exercise on the board to construct our own school timetable. And the first thing I need to write, guys, is the title. So school, we spell S-C-H-O-O-L, school. And we're looking at the school timetable. M-E-T-A-B-L-E. -E. So all together, guys, school timetable. Yes. Now remember earlier, I said a timetable needs at least two things. The first thing it needs is in the name, time. So we have our time. And then the next thing it needs is its activity. A, T, T, I, V, I, T, Y. And because it's a school timetable, the activity will usually be lessons. Because you guys are here to study. So we've got time and activity. Now who can remember and tell me what is the first thing you did this morning? What time? Eight o'clock. So what time? Eight o'clock until? 8.30. Okay, so the first thing we had was at eight o'clock until 8.30. Now what did you do at eight o'clock and 8.30, guys? Reception, okay, that's when we arrive at school and we all form into our classes. So the first thing we do every morning is we have reception. And then we begin to study. So what times are your first lesson at school? Excellent, 8.30 until 9.30. And what lesson do you study at this time? Math. Now, that's this lesson we're having now. How do we spell math? M-A-T-H. Okay. But after this lesson finishes, do you go home? No, you don't go home. What happens next? 9.30 until 10.30. And what lesson will you study then? Science. science. Okay, so now we have math, and then your next lesson is science. S C I E N C E. Okay, so you can see how the timetable is beginning to form with our times here and then the activity or the lesson here. So, what happens at 10 30, guys? Is it, is it time for lunch yet? No. Not yet. So we have 10.30, 10.30 until 11.30, and what will you do then? English, okay, so then we learn about English. E-N-G-L-I-S-H. Wow, that's a busy morning. So what are you doing at 8.30 till 9.30? 8.30 till 9.30? Math. Math. What are you doing 10.30 until 11.30? English. So you can see how you're using your timetable. It tells you what you're doing at the particular times. But then at 11.30, are we hungry yet? Yes. So what do we do at 11.30? Lunch. Lunch. And what time till? 
11.30 until 12.30 is lunch. L-U-N-C-H. And is it home time yet? No. What happens at 12.30? Learn more. 12.30 until 13.30 is Thai. Okay, so it's time for Thai language. Until 13.30. Remembering about the 24-hour clock, 13.30 is like 1.30 in the afternoon. And then it's time for Thai. Okay, and then what happens at 1.30, guys, or 13.30? Art, okay. And then we've got one more lesson at the end of the day. What do you do at 14.30? Sports, because we're practicing for sports day. 14.30 until 15.30 sports so you see guys here is an example of your school timetable for today so let's say together 8 o'clock till 8.30 reception 8.30 to 9.30, math, 9.30, till 10.30, what do you have? Science, and then 10.30, till 11.30, English, okay, now what happens at 11.30? Lunch, you can see, your timetable tells you that 11.30 till 12.30 is lunch. But then we come back 12.30 to 13.30. And then you will study Thai. And after Thai, 13.30 till 14.30, art. And then the final lesson of today, 14.30 till 15.30 is Sports. So what happens at 15.30? Where do you go? Go home. 15.30 is home time. And here is an example of a school timetable that my students have helped me to create. The timetable in your school will obviously be different, but you can see the general pattern of the time in the left-hand column and then the activity or the lessons. And this is an example of a schedule with a school timetable. So brilliant, guys. That was great. <laughs> and now it's time for our worksheet part of the lesson. So teachers, make sure every student in your class gets their own worksheet. And what they have to do today is to study the timetable that's on the worksheet. It gives a list of times that buses will leave different places in, in Thailand. We'll go from Rayong to Bangkok to Payao and then eventually to Chiang Rai. But there are two different buses. There's the fast bus and the express bus and they have different times. So we want our students to read the questions carefully and then answer them by looking at the information and answering in the spaces provided. So give our students around 12 minutes for this activity and just monitor the class and help them with anything they need. But what's the first thing to do, guys? Write our names on top first. So, Bangkok, this one's for you. Bangkok for you. You're welcome. Pro, here's yours. You're welcome. Dan for you. You're welcome. Chu, here's yours. You're welcome. Nadia for you. You're welcome. Pat, here's yours. You're welcome. Pak Bung for you. And Net, this one's for you. So names on top first, guys, and then have a read of the questions and look at the information. And if you need any help, let me know.
So the first question, what time does the fast bus depart from Rayong? Or the train, sorry, yes, the train. What time does the train depart Rayong? So we can see Rayong departs hundred hours or 7 a.m. So you can see by looking at the information in the train schedule timetable, we can answer the different questions. Okay, so what time does the fast train depart from Rayong? So we see here, fast, Rayong, what time? 700 hours. And that's how we read a timetable schedule correctly, so we can get the different bits of information. Okay, number two. What time does the express train arrive in Bangkok? So, okay, express is here. Bangkok arrives 9.28. Oh, sorry. Yes, that's the fast one. See, you're reading it better than me. <laughs> 9.58. Perfect. Well done, Bangkok. That's correct. You can see, arrives in Bangkok at 9.58. But be careful of questions five and six, guys, because five and six is asking about duration, how long it takes from start to finish. Excellent, Pak Bung. Well done. So number three, what time does the fast train arrive in Payao? So fast Payao arrives 17.58 hours. Correct. This is good practice if ever you have to go on a trip, guys. You can help your parents or your grandparents to read the schedules. Because if we want to take the bus or the train... We need to know what time it departs. And number five, number five is duration. So the fast bus from Rayong to Bangkok leaves at seven and arrives at 9.28. So seven o'clock to 9.28, how many hours, how many minutes? So the duration, remember duration is start to finish. So the fast bus takes to travel from Rayong to Bangkok. So it departs Rayong at 7 and then arrives at Bangkok 9.28. So from 7 o'clock to 9.28. Perfect. And then number 6 is the express from Rayong to Chiang Rai. So the total amount of time it takes to travel from 8 o'clock to 18.45. Okay, so now number five, duration. What is the duration of time the fast train takes to travel from Rayong to Bangkok? Fast train here leaves Rayong at 7, arrives in Bangkok 9.28. So from 7 o'clock to 9.28. Two hours and minutes. Perfect, Nadia. Well done. That's the duration, remember, from start to finish. Welcome back to class. We hope your students enjoyed the worksheet exercise where they had to analyze their own scheduled timetable of the train times around Thailand and then provide the answers in the spaces provided. And five and six is the total duration. So remember, from start to finish. My students here all did a brilliant job, so well done, guys. And that's all we've got time for today. So we hope you've enjoyed the lesson and found it interesting and now know how to read and understand 
timetables such as the ones that you'll have at school. And we'll see you again soon for the next lesson. So can we turn to wave and say goodbye, guys? Bye-bye. See you again soon.